All right, so this is my new Azuzu Trooper. This video is gonna be all about the Trooper in the first few weeks or month of owning it. This is a 1990 Azuzu Trooper. And the more I look at it, the more I like it. It's got the mechanical AC. Those are the best windows you can put in a vehicle. All right, so uh, starting to come together here. There's a few more things I'd like to do to it, but uh, it's certainly a lot cleaner. This side I haven't polished or anything yet. I did clean out the interior too. Theft proof gear shifter. There's the miles, 130,000. So for a little update here, been working on this uh, trooper for probably two days now. I removed the 1990s purple window tint that's super ugly. I got that all taken off and that was quite a chore. I gotta finish cleaning the paint there. So I made this little checklist here. Um, let's see here, remove 1990s window tint, did that go for a test drive. I still haven't even test drove this above uh, like 30 miles an hour, so that's good. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart. And uh, lastly, Pet Henry. Got that taken care of. So yeah, still got a lot to do.
I got up here and cleaned the bottom side of the trooper here. Uh, pressure washed it. I don't usually like doing that, but uh, I don't know if the oil leak's coming from the sensor or what, or the threads. I'm not real sure yet, but at least it's a lot cleaner under here now. All right, so I got this oil. I think that's an oil level sensor. It just has one wire. So, yeah, I don't know. But I got it taken out of the engine block. And the guy I bought it from said that's where the oil leak's coming from. But it's just so hard to say because it was so dirty under here. That's why I was pressure washing it. But I don't know. I guess we will see. I kind of just want to cap it off for a little bit and see if the oil leak keeps coming on. So if I put this lead in here and this one here, it's kind of a struggle to do all this, but you can hear it going off. It, like it should be now if i add pressure to it it should kick off and it does you can hear it see on pressure on buzzer off and how i did that was i got some of this fine stuff right here this free all i just sprayed it in there and i guess it got gunked up or something but i worked all that loose i think it might be working now so let's go slap it back in the trooper and see what happens All right, upon further investigation, that oil leak was definitely coming from that sensor. I put Teflon tape on the screw that goes into the sensor already. That's why it's not leaking now, but as soon as you plug that connector into it, it just leaks. So I think I'm just gonna cap that off at the engine block and call that good. The reason I'm all right with capping that off is because that sensor we're messing with goes to that light. But this trooper also comes with that oil pressure gauge, which is awesome. All right, so I pulled that sensor back out, and uh, I think I'm just going to run to the tractor supply and get a plug, and we're just going to plug that hole off, and hopefully that fixes our oil leak. All right, so tractor supply didn't have what I was needing. I guess we'll try an auto parts store next and see if they have anything. I couldn't find anything. I could not find a plug anywhere. So I got thinking, why can't I just fill that up with weld and call it done? Hopefully this works. So it's been a couple of days or weeks now since I put that plug in and there's no other crazy oil leaks like we were having earlier. So I'd say that's fixed. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is kind of take care of this rust here in the rocker panels. I don't really know why it did this, but it doesn't really matter why, it just needs to be fixed so it doesn't get a lot worse. All right, so I just left one of the best stores, got a new tool. I'm gonna use this on the trooper and see if it helps us with the rocker panels. All right, so my goal here is to get the back end of the trooper lowered down so I can clean out the frame rails pretty good. So the one issue with these vehicles and Jeeps is that the frame is boxed. So oftentimes what happens is, even if you don't live in a salty environment, mud and stuff will get in here and sit. 
And Jeep TJs, they're especially bad about getting mud and stuff in here, which this one isn't that bad, actually. I've had Jeeps that are a lot worse. It's important to clean these out. And, you know, they have drain holes, but, you know, it doesn't take much to get those plugged up. All I'm trying to do is just clean it out. It's really not that bad, but I just want to clean it up a little bit. All right, so here's what I'm using to clean out the inside of that frame. All it is is a piece of cable and one of these cable things and some chain link. And essentially what that does is it goes like that all inside the frame. It's homemade, obviously. It's not my idea either. I found this on YouTube years ago, but it's been one of the most useful things I've used on stuff like this. All right, so I needle scaled the frame there a little bit. Next thing I wanna do is kinda of clean it up before I do a little painting. This is Dawn dish soap and concrete cleaner, I think. Got a little brush. after cleaning it and pressure washing. So there's after a coat of paint. Pretty happy with that. I wish it was a little bit warmer outside, but I'll park it in the garage tonight. All right, so I was using this new needle scaler I got yesterday, and uh, well, I came out there this morning and it wouldn't even work. But then I got to figuring it out that it just wasn't letting air go through it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So basically how this works is the air comes through there and this, acts like a valve so when you this sticks up through there and when you press down on this it actuates the valve so what i figured out was it wasn't doing anything and it wasn't even making a hissing sound like air wasn't ever getting to it but it was getting air to this point it just wasn't letting it through so eventually i figured out that pushing down into the into the body of this enough to actuate the valve so so what i ended up doing was just taking a wood screw and i made this little rod out of it so like the original rod that was in the system was like uh, like half of that length. So like when you were closing this, it wasn't pushing in good enough. If anybody has one of these tools, just make your own rod, I guess. See what I'm talking about? That rod wasn't pushing on that valve enough. Like it didn't have enough travel in it. So now it's fixed though. This is one of the coolest tools I bought and for the price. All right, first drive on the road above 35 in the Trooper. Doing pretty good so far. I like how much you can see. You can see a lot of stuff. I feel like I'm in a fishbowl. All right, so I got me a load of scrap metal here. A bunch of copper too. Hoping this is enough to pay for an oil change for the trooper. I just can't seem to get this pin in. This is a tilt trailer. I gotta get this pin in so I can hit the road. Cinder block works every time. All right, so we just got offloaded here. Guess we'll see how we did. So here's how we did. Got $69 for the mixed stuff. And I got 84 for that copper. So that's pretty cool. That's a lot more than I was thinking.
think this is a good place to end this video. If you made it this far, I appreciate you watching, and I guess we'll see you on the next one.